and it is the moment of truth. Tomorrow we are going to be flying out to somewhere. Results from the DNA test will be the thing that decides where we go. What is up guys? Right now we have just arrived in beautiful Ottawa and like this feels like home. I'm so excited to be here. Hi guys, I'm making Christian film a fitness routine for me. Um, <laughs> so I'm currently in this outfit, but I'm really excited to be here. Quick bait. No, she's like, no, <laughs> leave us alone. I look like I'm not wearing clothes. Look, <laughs> this could be clickbait. Look at this. This is a nudist colony, welcome to Ottawa. <laughs> this cottage is one of my favorite places in the entire world. So they took a old Airstreamer, they basically turned it into a giant living space. They got two beds in there, and that right there is our trusty steed that we take out. And this year, everyone has brought their boyfriends. So there's three Laura sisters. <laughs> what? That's, I mean, they have names, but there's okay. So three Laura sisters. The three Laura sisters. Yeah, They're not all named Laura. No. But. Laura one, Laura two, and Laura three. Hi, Laura three. She doesn't speak English. <laughs> For the past five summers, this is where Laura and I have come to put her legs up, to take a break from being on the road, and have a bunch of our friends and family in one place to just catch up and enjoy the incredible Ottawa summer. Over the week, we had our fair share of burgers and greasy diner food, and we even spent a couple nights at the fair. Alfredo the alpaca. <laughs> if you want to find romance, come to a small town fair. Love is in the air. After a couple nights at the country fair, we'd had our fair share of demo derbies. <laughs> okay. Laura's dad had organized a huge family gathering, so we headed across to the Quebec side and picked up nearly a thousand dollars worth of party supplies. The next day was the big party and Laura's dad hired a caterer, a bartender, and there was tons of amazing food and drinks. From close family to distant relatives, it's always fun to get to know Laura's family a little better. Thanks for being part of the vlog, guys. <laughs> <laughs> now that was our week at the cottage in a nutshell, but that's not what today's video is about. It is our final day here at the cottage, it's day six, and today's a video like never before. Today's video is actually sponsored by 23andMe. About two weeks ago, I got sent a DNA ancestry kit, and from there I spat inside of a tube, I mailed that tube into a lab, and 23andMe is going to be telling me what my DNA composition is. Now the really exciting part of all this is that depending on what the results are, that is where 23andMe will be sending Laura and I to go explore tomorrow. Welcome to the sandbar. The water is at like an all time high, so I think just six months ago, there's like a lighthouse little wharf area and that entire pier was like under the water because the water levels have gotten so high and this beach has actually kind of eroded away a little bit. Right as we were enjoying our beautiful day on the beach, I got the email. The email I had been waiting for. The results for my 23andMe DNA test had just come in. P.S. If you're wondering why they're called 23andMe, it's because you have 23 pairs of chromosomes. If you didn't know that, I don't blame you. I didn't know it either. I'd always been extremely curious to know more about my lineage, but I only knew what was passed down through word of mouth in the family. To be able to scientifically find out where my family was from hundreds of years ago is something I never imagined possible. Laura and I got back in the motorboat and we headed back to the cottage. This was a really quick stop, but we need to get our annual couples photo because every year we've been here we've been doing it and you see the size differences as I've gotten jacked, then gotten skinnier, now I think I'm at my like all time like weakest, but it's good. Bye! <laughs> we're cutting things really close. Like, flights are gonna be expensive because it's so last minute. Uh, that's why we're currently heading back to my laptop to go book some flights and uh, get ready for a big trip tomorrow. All right, so we're back and it is the moment of truth. Tomorrow we're gonna be flying out to somewhere, I assume in Europe. Like, yeah. I, I, mean, I don't think I'm African, I don't think I'm Asian. Your last Could be wrong. Long. Yeah, and uh, the results from the DNA test will be the thing to decide where we go. It is somewhere we've always wanted to go. I'm so excited right now. I was hoping for that result. I kind of thought it could be it, and it turned out to be correct. There's a lot of other things in there that I want to talk about in a little bit, uh, but first, let's book some tickets. <laughs> tickets are now booked. And they are so expensive. Oh my gosh, buying things the last minute has a price to it. But you will find out where I'm from because we're going there tomorrow. 
Yay! I'm so excited. See you then. Mark. Or What's where, up? Where's Wilson? Is he's known as now? Where's Wilson? <laughs> Check out his YouTube channel, guys. He's just in Africa with Katie. Oh my gosh. We spent three weeks in Namibia and three weeks in South Africa. Damn. Bye. Cinematics. Our taxi is gonna be picking us up in about 10 minutes here, so we're frantically scrambling to get everything together. Are you excited? Where is she? Yeah, I'm so excited, but I feel like I have too many things to do. Christian, I think it's here. The cab's here. The cab's oh, here. crap. And we're off. Next stop to Kentucky. We're at the airport, we're at the gate, and we're headed off to... So guys, not only could this moment not get any better because I'm so excited about where we're going, but we just got upgraded to business class. I've never had that in my entire life. Guys, I am in business class. Like, I'm so stoked right now. I've accumulated that frequent flyer status pretty hard these days. We got courtesy upgrades. <laughs> <laughs> so the last flight was 45 minutes. It was nothing. It was like it was really nice to be in business, but whatever. But then we get here to check in, and it's still economy flight. We had our little ticket to get on the plane, and then they call our names on the PA, and they're like Christian and Laura. And so we go running, and they gave us business class upgrades for a long haul flight all the way to. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> seat number three. <laughs> that sweet life, though. <laughs> oh. I feel like I'm an astronaut. I'm going into space. Ten minutes in, I'm still not convinced they're gonna come grab me and just like send me to the back of the plane where I'm supposed to be. But in the meantime, things are good. They've delivered me a drink in a glass container. Can you imagine that? Getting served in a glass on a plane? I've never flown first class, business class before. Um, this is a first and to have two flights in a row, like, it's making my day, no question about it. And the best thing about it is too, it's a red eye flight, so we're gonna be arriving in Paris tomorrow. It's gonna be 7.30 a.m. Paris time. Oh, I just gave away where we're going. We're going to Paris. <laughs> That's where we're going. So I'm really excited, guys. We're gonna be exploring my Parisian roots, my Francais langue. Flight time of 6 hours and 20 minutes. Hello. Thank you very much. The best flight I've ever had, no doubt. Goodbye, plane. Look at these roundabouts. Oui, c'est folle. So, what were my 23 me results? Well, I found out that I'm 99.9% .9 European, with almost all of it being Northwestern European. I'm 40% French and German, 28.3% British and Irish, and less than 0.1% Finnish. To be honest, I never really thought of where my family would be from. I never thought I'd be able to get a definitive answer to that, so I never really looked much into it. But knowing what I know now is definitely an incredible piece of information. Alright, what is up guys? Admittedly, it's gotten a bit later because when we got here, we crashed. We slept for like four hours. We're supposed to just do a couple hours, but you know how it goes. This is the view from our little balcony. You can definitely tell you're in a large city. I mean, our shower is this tiny little cubicle. Everything is clean and bright, and this is exactly the kind of place we were hoping for. And this cost us about 135 Canadian, about 110 US. Overall, I'm shocked at how affordable things were to stay here in Paris. Like, there was lots of different lofts that looked like this, and we are literally a five minute walk from the Arc de Triomphe, and we're probably about a 15 minute walk from the Eiffel Tower. Why talk about it when well, we can show you, so let's go. front of the Eiffel Tower and I was saying it's so crazy because like you grow up seeing photos of it but to actually see it it's like it's really cool. Have you been to France? No well like I was a baby so I funny story at the top of the Eiffel Tower I actually um, basically myself everywhere and my mom had to like run down it was apparently a whole ordeal because I pooped myself as a child at the top of the Eiffel Tower. I wasn't expecting that answer but uh, yeah I've been here before. I was 13 when I was last here. Like, I have this really dreamy memory of it. I knew that I wanted to come back. I even said to my parents, I'm gonna live here one day. But for the next five days, we're gonna do our best to live as much like locals. Yeah, we're gonna see stuff like the Eiffel Tower, but we also wanna find those like hidden coffee shops, restaurants, and I wanna give you guys information onto like what it would look like to actually live in Paris. That's why we're here today, to explore a little bit and share that with you as we go and find my roots, find my dad. Well, now my dad's in Canada, what? but... <laughs> no, Marcel. Marcel Leblanc. His dad could not have any more of a French name, so... Nothing. We figured we... Probably France. <laughs> We're chasing the easy life. 
So this is the non-glamorous side of things. We're currently sitting on the dirt trying to set up the steady cam. Are you doing okay? I just want water or ice cream, <laughs> but I'm not being fed. <laughs> Help. Also, I want cheese and wine. I've been scoping out like the best Instagram shots of the Eiffel Tower, and I know there's one with a staircase, so it only makes sense that it's that one because everything else is below the Eiffel Tower, and I want to get a, like eye level with it. So we're gonna go check that out. Uh, the sun has just set, so we, right now we've got about 15 minutes of good lighting. Let's take advantage of that. Lovers in Paris. Don't give up on the dream. What do you say to the sweet Lovers in Paris. Oh. <laughs> Once the sun sets, on the hour, every hour, until about 2 a.m. I believe, the lights go off on the Eiffel Tower and for two minutes straight, it just sparkles like the stars. It's so beautiful. Because of the height up here, you're able to shoot in a way that kind of hides the crowds and so it was like that one little chance we had to make it look like we had the Eiffel Tower to ourselves because that is far from reality. It's been a really good night. We're now going to head and get some dinner. It's like 10.30 right now, but I think that's like when most Parisians go out for food. What do you think, Laura? It's the Eiffel Tower. Lived up to its expectations? Yeah. I definitely would say so. That was really cool. <laughs> I called a dog over to get a photo of it and it just jumped into a bush thinking it was like the ground or firm concrete. Oh, that was like the uh, funniest vlog clip I think I've ever seen. That was here. awesome. Oh, oh no! <laughs> he just jumped in the bush. And then the owners were like, say? you gotta pay if you wanna get footage. They were oh, joking. Oh, <laughs> But they said it in like a French term I didn't understand, so then it was just one of those awkward situations when no one understood the joke and then we all walked away from each other. I do speak French. Je peux parler français assez bien, mais ça devient difficile parce que je pratique pas. Basically, I'm saying I don't practice my French anymore, and so it's become ah, a lot harder. But I still understand very well. I can respond to basically anything, but uh, I do stumble on the occasional word. Je parle un petit peu en français. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's her one sentence. That's she doesn't, literally the only, the only sentence she knows is saying, I speak a bit of French, which is a horrible lie. Bonjour. <laughs> All right, we have arrived at Le Coq, which is French for the cock, which is English for the rooster. And uh, we're gonna get ourselves some cheese, some wine. Looks like a very nice place with pretty reasonable pricing. $20 for an entree, which, you know, in Paris, that's pretty standard. And uh, we're gonna get ourselves a bottle of wine, or maybe just a couple glasses. Bottle? Bottle, I don't know, we'll see. Can I sit on that side? We got some fine red wine, well and petty. Pretty much anywhere you get food in Paris, they will always bring out like baguettes or little breads with your meal in a stick of butter. It's really good. It's hard not to ruin your own appetite though, because like I have such a bad habit that I can't leave food in front of me without eating it all. And so that's why I'm always like so stuffed after a meal if I get a big meal. But luckily the Parisians generally have smaller portions, so we'll be the judge of that. I like it. Cheers. Back at our place. It's been an amazing first day here in Paris. Again, I wouldn't be here without 23 Me. Kind of like a dream come true for the two of us to be able to spend some quality time in the city of love. If you want to learn more about your DNA composition, then make sure to check out the custom link down below. It'll set you up with one of the tests that I took, and 23andMe is such a fantastic way to learn more about your heritage and your background. Let's get lost again in the next one. Okay, get out of there. Let's go. You're not getting anything.